do a review on uh, some questions based on 3.6, 3.7 of, of unitary AP pre-calculus. So um, if we are given that the graph of a sinusoidal curve is given and it is written as this, so what are the values of A, B and D? Okay, the good thing is there is no horizontal shift, right? There is no C value. So whenever that happens, actually it works in our favor uh, because it becomes easier to figure out the value of A. I mean, you will understand in a minute. So uh, the first things first, the easiest thing I think is to find the value of B because B is just related to the period. And we know that B is given by two pi over the period of the function, right? Uh, what is the period of this function? So let's try to do it. So when we start from here, uh, the one cycle completes right here, correct? So we are starting from zero going all the way till pi. So the period is going to be pi. So we're going to say that's two pi over pi, which gives us a nice and cozy number two. Now, um, if you remember, we talked about the maximum and minimum values, the formula as such. So the maximum value is given by absolute value of A uh, plus D, or maybe uh, a better way to do this would be to use the direct formulas, first I'm going to reuse from midline. So the midline, uh, which is represented by D, is going to be the maximum number plus minimum number divided by 2. Maximum is clearly 4, minimum is negative 2. So 4 minus 2 over 2, which is just 1. So we got the value of D as 1. Uh, for the amplitude, uh, we say that absolute value of A is maximum minus minimum over 2. Uh, maximum is once again, we know the numbers, it's 4 minus minus 2 over 2, uh, running out of space. So I'm going to shrink this thing. Um, all right, so maximum minus minimum over 2, which is going to give, I think, 6 over 2, which is going to give us 3 right here. Absolute value of A is equal to 3. Now the question is whether A is 3 or negative 3, right? And that's where I was saying that not having a C helps C as in the horizontal shift really helps us because we just have to see that how is the, you know, how is the graph oriented? For example, a sinusoidal curve uh, has the parent function goes in this fashion, right? The parent function is like this. It starts and, uh, it starts and goes up. But if it is going down, it would make sense and it should start actually, uh, if it is going down, then this, this term, this A value should be negative because it's reflected about the X axis. You know, we are getting that sense. So we are going to take the value of A as negative 3 from here because there are two values, plus 3 and minus 3. So the final model is negative 3 sine 2 theta plus 1, right? This is our final model. Uh, and this was easy because there was no value of horizontal shift or C. All right, uh, well, we are lucky as again, so we do not have C. So let's start with the value of uh, B. Uh, what is the period of this? I think we start from here, go all the way and complete one cycle here. So it ends at two pi, sorry, starts at zero and at four pi. So the value of B is two pi over four pi, which is the period. Uh, pi and pi is gone and two over four is one over two. Okay, uh, let's find D. Uh, D is going to be the maximum value plus minimum value divided by two. Maximum value is three, minimum value is negative five divided by two. Three minus five is negative two, negative two over two is negative one. And finally, we have the value of absolute value of A, which is maximum plus, sorry, minus minimum um, divided by 2. So 8 over 2 is 4, guys, right? So absolute value of A is 4, which means, again, that A is plus or minus 4. And then we see that how the parent function of cos looks like. Actually, parent function exactly looks like this because when cos, uh, if you recall the, uh, the graph of cosine, then it starts from here and go down and then up. And this is also going down and then up. So A value will just be a positive number. So I'm going to write that my final answer is A is just 4 cos of B, which is half theta 
plus d and d is minus 1. So, I am just going to write minus 1. Uh, for these two questions, uh, I mean this one and uh, the next one, I know we have solved such questions earlier in the uh, 3.6 videos, but uh, in, I think in, for, uh, for this one, I'm going to do it with a different way and probably you might find this way more efficient rather than if you remember what we used to do is obviously first we'll find the value of B, which is obviously same in all the cases and then we'll find the midline. And then I, uh, then I said in the earlier videos that if there is a value of C, you cannot use a shortcut and you have to, you know, take a point, which is definitely not the midline. It's not the midline, but uh, take any usually maximum and then plug in in all the options to find the correct choice. Now I'm going to do that with a different way. Uh, so first let's find the midline. Midline is definitely, uh, this is 2, this is negative 4. So midline is maximum plus minimum over 2. Uh, that's the value of d which is negative 2 over 2 which is negative 1. So obviously negative 2 is ruled out. Now all these options are same in terms of amplitude and midline right and the value of b as well. So I'm not bothered about finding b. So the strategy is about the translation. C is basically doing a horizontal translation right can we agree on that. So this means that this function has been translated pi units to the right because it, it is counterintuitive. If it is negative pi, it means that it is going to the right. So pi is right here and this is the function at pi. Now, had this was a sine curve, a positive sine curve, uh, with, because A is positive, it would have started in this fashion because that's how a parent sine function behaves but it is not behaving like this. So this is not the correct choice. Likewise, I will go three pi over two units to the right and see its behavior. There it is, three pi over two. Now, had this was cosine, it would have started from the top, from three pi over two, but it is starting from the negative, which definitely makes sense because this is also negative three cosine. And yes, this is exactly how the cosine would have behaved because cosine starts from maximum, negative cosine starts from minimum. This is definitely a very strong option, but we'll see D as well. Here I'm going pi over two units to the left. If I want to go left, I'm going to end up with uh, here. I'm going to end up here. This is uh, uh, negative pi over two. And this is going also from minimum to maximum, but that's not correct because this is positive three cos. Positive positive three cos should have started from the from the maximum and then it, it would have gone to the minimum, but no, it's the other way around. So this should have been negative uh, if this uh, was the correct choice. So it's not definitely D, the correct choice is option C. So you realize that this method is more like mental math rather than doing all the algebra or maybe the trigonometry by plugging in the x values. Uh, I think it definitely saves time, but it's up to you which one you want to choose. Okay, uh, here I'm gonna, let's compare. So here I think there's nothing to compare because amplitude is same in all the cases, B value is same in all the cases and midline is also zero in all the cases. So let's apply, apply our strategy. Uh, this one says that there is no horizontal shift. So it starts from this point, but that's not correct because the regular cosine with a positive A will start from maximum, but this is starting from minimum to maximum. So that's definitely not correct. Let's go to option B where we have to go pi over four units to the right. So pi over four to the right is somewhere here. And, but that's not correct. I mean, how can a cosine start from midline? This is a midline, right? Cosine doesn't start from a midline. Cosine parent starts from the maximum. So that's not correct. Uh, let's talk about this one. Here we need to again go pi over two units to the right. There you go. But again, uh, how is that possible? Because if it's starting from the top, it should have been positive four cos. But this is negative four cos, which should ideally start from the minimum point. So that's also not correct. Uh, let's try the last one, which is uh, this. So negative pi, negative pi will go, it will go pi units to the right. So pi units to the right is here, which is here. And definitely this matches with negative four cos because negative four, I mean, negative cos starts from a minimum and goes to a maximum. So it has to be option D for this one.
All right, um, over here we are given coordinates of five points and we need to figure out that H can, be, uh, okay, and we H can be written in this form. So we have to find the values of the constants A, B, C, and D. That's interesting, okay. Uh, I would like to mark these points or probably even if I, okay, I'd like to mark at least F and P. Uh, well, it's it, when it comes to the graph, it's a, it's slightly easier to you know understand. So that's why I did that. I know that this is one cycle for sure, All right? This is one cycle, so I can figure out the value of b because b is going to be two pi over p rate and four to sixteen. How much have we traveled? I think twelve units. So two pi over twelve, which is just pi over six. So we got the value of b from here. I think the D will also be easy to find because the coordinates of J are 10 and 36. So I know that the value of D will be maximum plus minimum over 2. So the maximum is 64, minimum is 36 over 2. Uh, so that's going to look like 60, 90, 100. Is that just 50? 60, 90, 100. I think so. It should be 50. So let's close it up at 50. Okay. Now we need to figure out what is um, um, A or right now in order to figure out A and C here actually since we have the flexibility to take a pair of A and C that will add up. So you are free to take A as a positive number or a negative number because accordingly uh, the, the C will come right according to, accordingly the C will come that's the beauty of this question it's a flexibility. So absolute value of A is going to be 64 minus 36 divided by 2, which is going to be 64 minus 36 is 4 and 4 is 8. And this is uh, 5 minus 3 is 2, 28 over 2, which is 14. And I'm just going to take the value of A as positive 14. I mean, who likes the negative number? So A is negative, four, uh, sorry, A is 14. And since A is 14, now I will work on finding, I'm just writing H as Y. So y is equal to a, a is 14, cos of uh, b, b is pi over 6 by the way, and t is unknown, c is what we are looking for, I mean t is a variable, uh, c is what we are looking for, and d is 50. And all you have to do is just, just don't take any midline point, just take any minimum or maximum point and put that in and figure out the value of c. So I think I'm going to put an f only because... Uh, well, uh, at least t is a small number, so I'm going to put in uh, 4 comma 64. So that's going to look like 64 is equal to 14 cos pi over 6. Um, and t is 4, right? 4 plus c plus 50 over here. Sorry, I made some space here. Subtracting 50 both the sides, I will get 14 is equal to 14 cos of pi over 6, 4 plus c. 14 and 14 is, uh, you know, dividing both sides with 14. So I'm just left with 1. 1 is equal to cos of pi over 6, 4 plus c. And when is cos 1? Obviously, when the inside thing is 0, right? Uh, you can take any number, honestly. You can take 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi. But why will I take a bigger number? I'll just take 0. That's more convenient. So pi over 6, 4 plus c should be equal to 0, which means that 4 plus c should be equal to 0, which means that c should be equal to negative 4, right? Uh, remember, this is not the only solution. There are various possible solutions for this question, various values of, I mean to say, a and c combinations. It depends on which one you are taking. So if you have a different answer, you can uh, well post it down and I'll check if that works or not. But anyway, for the moment, our answer is y is equal to 14 cos pi over 6 t minus 4 plus 50. That is our final answer. And please keep in mind that you are definitely going to get FRQ number three in your AP exam, which will be just like that. I mean, one of the part will be like that. So this is important. We'll do one more practice of a similar kind. If you want, feel free to try, uh, pause the video and try this question. Uh, I'm gonna label F, I'm gonna label J, which is two pi negative 10, and I'm gonna label P as well, which is four pi negative two. 
All right, that's interesting because this is a negative number, right? Although, and don't think that this is x-axis, this is just a midline. Okay, first things first, right off the bat, I need the period. So I go from zero to four pi. I need four pi, uh, sorry, uh, I have the period of four pi. So B value is two pi over four pi, which is one over two. Okay, midline D is gonna be maximum value, which is negative two plus minimum value, which is negative 10 over two. So negative 12 over two is just negative six. I'm gonna take the value of A as a positive number. So it's gonna be maximum value minus minimum value uh, divided by two. Uh, so that's gonna be obviously 10 minus two is eight, eight over two is four. And accordingly, I'm gonna find the value of C. So I will first write the equation as Y is equal to four sine um, four sine um, b which is half t plus c and plus t which is negative six so i'm going to plug in uh, which number would you like let's plug in zero negative two which is f so negative two is equal to four sine half of c because remember t is zero minus six Adding six both the sides, I have four is equal to four sine one over two C. So uh, dividing both sides with four, I have one is equal to sine of one over two C. And when is sine one? Well, the easiest number uh, that I can think of is pi over two, although there are various numbers, but I think the pi over two is the easiest, in my, at least for me. Two and two is gone and the value of C is pi. And there you go. My answer is going to be Y is equal to a, which is four sine of one over two t, t is something that right, I mean, that's just a depend, independent variable, t plus c, c is pi uh, minus six. So that's gonna be our final answer.